Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be taking a look at the very last issues that came out under the Pan X prefix. And that's uh, from, well, my earliest one here is Pan uh, X668, uh, which is uh, Octopussy here. And we're going to go up to Pan X745 and then a few after that. Um, and that was the very end of the Pan Giant series, the ones that were numbered at least. Um, so that's what we're going to be having a look at today. And we've got some fantastic books. Now this is as far as I can recall, the only James Bond one. And I actually should have included this in the last video, but I completely forgot because my Bond books are separate from my uh, main pan collection. I've got like all my Bond stuff together. Um, I forgot to include this one. So apologies for that, but doesn't matter anyway, because we can have a look at my uh, copies of Octopussy now. So this is the first printing of Octopussy. This is X668. And... Um, I had a bit of a job finding this one in a first edition. In the end, I got it from Australia and um, I think it cost me about eight pound for the book, and maybe about six quid for the postage. I honestly couldn't believe it. Um, looks like there's a bit of pencil there to rub out, but quite scarce. So here is the, the first UK edition. So first published in this form, 1967 by Pam. Then this is the much more common just with a plain X on the spine. I believe this is the, the second printing of it. Yes, the second print, 1968. So this is definitely the more common edition that you'll find in the UK. But then there's this one as well. Now this is the Canadian edition, I believe. And this one often gets passed off as an export British copy when that's really not the case because we've seen the British one just there. So it actually says like printed in Canada. Um, the, the size of it compared to British paperback, well, it's like a millimetre or two shorter and a millimetre or two narrower than a British edition. But the main giveaway, of course, is um, inside. It'll have uh, first published in this form by Pan Books in Ontario. So uh, nowhere near London. <laughs> so anyway, that's the three copies of Octopussy and... Um, a uh, great, great book it is as well. Next, we've got back to the normal number now. So X679. This is Sword of Honor. David Beatty. Can't remember much about that particular one. Oh, now here's one I do like. So around this period, Pan did publish some great science fiction titles. This is a real minter as well, isn't it? Look, Robert Heinlein, an author I particularly like for his science fiction. Green Hills of Earth are a classic, in fact. Yeah, I think I got this one fairly recently as an upgrade from a friend of mine. So yes, so it was first published by Pan all the way back in 1956 and then re-released in 67. And you see, second printing reset. That means that this is the first time the book has had this particular jacket. But that's a real, real mint one there. Next, we've got X681, which is um, a John Creasy, Superintendent West, Murder, London, Australia. Mm -hmm. Bit of artwork on that one. There he is, John Creasy, Britain's most prolific and consistently popular writer of top-class crime novels. Over 25 million copies of his books have been sold. Wow. Next, we've got X683, The Chinese Visitor, James Eastwood. Now, this is interesting. This actually has got an 85 cents export sticker in the top corner there. So I wonder where this one was exported to. Aha, look at this, look. Main used book exchange, pay top prices for your books record, 780 Main Street, Vancouver, Canada. So this has come all the way from Canada. We were just talking about that, but it is the British edition. So that is a legitimate Canadian export, I guess. And it actually went over there and somehow managed to get back to the UK. Amazing. Next, we've got eight. X688 and Edgar Wallace, The Brigand, one of the later titles. 
now a, a classic. Now these would come, there would be a whole series of these, the Pan Books Bestsellers of Literature. Um, and this was Pan 689, a, a real classic here, yeah, Pride and Prejudice. They're not wrong there. It definitely is a, a classic with an introduction and notes by Bridget Brophy. And the series had a general editor as well. Um, yeah, not something you'd think of Pan for, but they did have that particular series. Here's another one in the same run. Wuthering Heights, Emily Bronte. This is X690. And we will see some later on when we look at some of the smaller series, like the E's, for example. Um, I think they've got some uh, classics in. Also, um, Tim and I met one of the author, one of the artists who did a lot of the covers for those. Uh, um, and uh, I'll... Uh, Go into that in a bit more detail when we get to those books. Uh, Jane Grant, um, Sisters Under Their Skins. Ah, uh, yes, recognize those. I think I've said it many times before, but do, um, if you are interested in looking at even more pan artwork, there is only one real destination online, and that's ticket.net. It's uh, Tim, he's the Biggest Pan fan I know, and uh, he's got, I think he's got virtually everything bar one book now. Um, X697, Hillary War, End of a Party. Starting to creep in with the, um, the sort of the, the pictures now. Imagine if those were your legs. What a talking point. You buy a few copies of this, but say, you know, they were my legs. So when I used to do a little bit of um, extra work when I was an actor, just for fun, you understand, back in the day, um, you'd have lots of time between shots. And there was one chap I uh, I got to know. He was quite local and he was an older gentleman and he became the face of Burt's Crisps, <laughs> if you can believe it. OK, X698, Andrew Garve. Ah, oh, so later crime one from him. The Ashes of Loda. Mm. Quite a nice uh, jacket on that one. Nowhere near the uh, the class act of uh, the 50s and 60s artists, but, you know, those days are sadly long gone. So the eighth Pan Book of Horror Stories, X699. I always remember this one as a kid with the old head in a bucket. <laughs> or is it a bucket or is it a hat? It's a hat. It's not a bucket. It's, um, it's a hat box. So I think this, uh, yeah, this is the first printing of this one. And this was the first to have the non-artwork jackets. It was the photo jacket. And I suppose it is a, it's a really good, it's a convincing head. I wonder if it's like a waxwork one or something from uh, Madame Two Swords. But cool all the same. X701. Uh, last batch now. So the Assassins, Frederick Mulally. Author of Dance Macabre. Ah, oh, yeah, I've seen those. Once again, that's quite nice. So you've got the model and a few little props, no doubt, to tie in with the story. I mean, was that was that easier than just commissioning an artist to do a painted jacket? Was it easier? Was it cheaper? I don't know. X708 is a TV time. Uh, Till Death is Due Part, unless it is for the movie, possibly. Yeah, I think that I think they did do a movie of Till Death is Part, and that's what this is the adaption of, not a TV tie. So it is the movie time, but there was a TV series, of course, uh, adapted by uh, John Burke, who did many, many like this. Not at Universal bookstores, so that was in my hometown, but no longer there now, of course. We've got some pictures here. Brilliant. Good stuff. Next, we've got X711, which is John Ball in the Heat of the Night. And this was the movie tie-in to this particular one, although it doesn't jump out initially saying it's a movie tie-in. Um, but Sidney Poitier and Rod Steiger star in the new Norman Jewison, Walter Mersch, Film production for release by United Artists. So there we are. Look at that. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, there is actually a still on the back. Mm, nice copy of that one as well. It looks almost unread. 
1967. Oh, that's a real, real highlight there. I'm really pleased with that one. Um, 712, another Robert Heinlein. Also in pretty nice condition. Red Planet. X712. The Undisputed King of Science Fiction for Young Readers. So is this one aimed at the youngsters then, is it? Hmm. I wouldn't have said he was uh, particularly aimed at youngsters. Here's another high line. This is consecutive numbers. So 712 and this is 713. Farmer in the Sky, which is, is a great, great one, this. Lovely jacket, that. That's really cool. He's in some sort of, um, he's riding some sort of metal centipede or something. That's brilliant. Shame there's no, um, doesn't actually list the cover artist, does it? That's a shame. Look this old 50p. <laughs> it's probably why I paid for it. Now, this is a bit of a classic, isn't it? 714 Poor Cow. This is another... Was, was this a movie or was it a, a, like a TV movie? I think it was a movie, you know. Um, we've got Terence Stamp and Carol White with the stars. I recognize Terence Stamp from Superman 2. A Sizzler, Daily Express. Look at this, John Brain. I was disgusted, I was nauseated, I was saddened, but I was not bored. Oh, okay, just as long as you weren't bored then, mate. You know, cut. Yeah, author of Up the Junction, which I think we've already seen. These two sort of go together. So this is X718. An X seven one nine, and it's the two Jungle Books, but it's the tie into the Disney animated version of the Jungle Book, which is nineteen sixty seven, nineteen sixty eight, which was brilliant. I mean, absolutely fantastic. I love this. In fact, the Jungle Book was my favourite Disney film growing up. It was, you know, of the classic animated ones by far. And um, I love this. Yeah, they give the uh, the cast on the back, which is brilliant. Really, really good. Yeah, they did a very good job with those two, and uh, they go to, They are a great pair, the two, the two original Jungle Books by Kipling. Now a very late Agatha Christie X seven twenty one, Hercule Poirot's Christmas. Classic. So yeah, this was the first time Pan got round to publishing this one. In 1967 and even though we're at the tail end of the run the books coming out are still really really cool 722 then is a perry mason the case of the singing skirt oh dear a novel in pan's best of american crime fiction yeah i bet the U the usa jacket wouldn't have been like that that doesn't appeal to me one little bit. 723 then. This is a bit more like it. That's that's a bit more fun. The Fruit Machine, the only girl in the game, a John MacDonald. And that's quite nice with a with the Fruit Machine going on there. That's a bit more inventive. Quite like that one, actually. John MacDonald, a good sort of hardboard crime writer, one that I quite enjoy um, reading when I'm in the mood for something like that. 728, then X728 is the powerhouse, Haggard. Hmm, don't know much about that one. Once again, they've got the model there and they've just laid all the, the props out on her hair. Oh dear. Next, we've got uh, 732 and Edgar Wallace. Again, the three. Amazing to think how popular he still was, even at this time. He certainly had a good run as an author, didn't he? X733, The Secret Journey, Ronald Kirkbridge, by the author of Tamiko. So we saw um, another Tamiko book last time round as well. Seven three five is um, a western, a very late western. Philip Jones, Johnny Lost. Don't know anything about that one at all. But 
Yeah, there were still people into their westerns at this time of... So here's another Agatha Christie, X736. In fact, I believe it was, wasn't this the very first Agatha Christie? Um, that was that published, you know, back in the... Uh, yeah, well, first published 1934. Maybe not the first, but certainly one of the very early ones. Just a few more left now. So we got X741, Tales of Mystery and Imagination. Great uh, skull cover there with the spiders all over it. Edgar Allan Poe. Can't go wrong with a bit of uh, Edgar Allan Poe. And, uh, well, let's just see how... This was 1968, this edition. But I'm still pretty convinced that that was the first with that cover. But maybe that's one Tim could check out for us. X742 is a saint book. Leslie Charteris. The Avenging Saint. Quite nice with the... Um, well, there's a dagger there um, on the cover. Pretty cool. Pretty cool little jacket, that one. X744, Smashing Time. Now, this is another one by John Burke. And uh, this is also a, a movie tie-in. There's uh, Rita Tushingham and Lynn Redgrave with Michael York. And this is, uh, well... Very much of its period, isn't it? It's a hippie, sort of a hippie, teeny movie back then. It's just a, 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 yet another movie for it. Well, you could almost say this was a forgotten film, couldn't you? Oh, I've never heard of it. And I'm quite a movie buff, so I've never seen that one. X745 then, and I believe this is the very last numbered one in the X series. And it was a pan special, so it was an original. The Stansted Affair, A Case for the People. Was this about building, um, yeah, this is about building Stansted Airport, I believe. Yeah, there was a public inquiry. Hmm. And that appears to be the very last one. I'm pretty sure X745 is the final one in the series. And quite interesting that it was uh, um, a pan original, a pan special as it were, to finish the series. And then after that, so a bit later than my sort of period, really, I have got these few titles, which are just, they're X's, pan X's, but they're not actually numbered ones. So they came after this main little run here, but I keep them because they're so similar to the original ones that we've been looking at. It's almost like a continuation of the series. Um, I'll only pick these up into the early seventies, but this was a 1968 one, Death of a Racehorse by John Creasy. Here's another Creasy, Murder on the Line, featuring Roger West. There's a lot going on in that cover, isn't there? So that was also 1968. And the last one I've got, well, another little classic. It's the, uh, the Pan-X series version of um, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Not the greatest of copies, this one. I am on the lookout for a slightly better one. Um, they're not difficult to find. It's just... Uh, haven't come across one yet. This was also 1968. Really nice with the um, the colour inserts there. Great stuff. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed looking through the very last of my Pan Giant collection. So the next thing we're going to be looking at next month is going to be the Pan Majors. So they're the M series. And they go back to the huge, huge books. And we're looking at uh, right back into the 1950s and 60s again. So some fantastic titles to look forward to. If you have enjoyed today's video, do please give it that thumbs up and do please consider subscribing for regular vintage paperback content. And I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.